Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to take a look at IKEA's K1 Pro Max laser engraver and enclosure kit. This machine is unique because it uses 14 6 watt laser diodes to generate one of the most powerful diode lasers available for deep cutting and fast engraving performance at speeds of up to 54,000 millimeters per minute with an accuracy of 0.01 millimeters. It has a spot size of just 0.15 by 0.2 millimeters at 70 watts, which can be reduced by 50% to 0.1 by 0.15 millimeters for fine detail engraving by flipping the switch on the side of the module from 70 watts max output power to 35 watts max output. The laser module is also equipped with flame detection and air assist to boost cutting performance and help prevent surface burn, and it's mounted to an intelligent Z-axis that can perform autofocus and auto-sync functions. The controller includes a 4.3 inch touchscreen display for adjusting some basic device settings and for offline engraving through a USB drive instead of connecting directly to a PC. And it has resume engraving capability to limit time loss and preserve your work in case of an unexpected power outage. The frame is very sturdy with limit switches on all axes and provides a 410 by 410 millimeter work area, which is almost completely pre-assembled prior to shipping, so it only takes a few minutes to attach the gantry and laser module and connect the cables. When that was done, I unboxed the steel enclosure and started assembling it, which took around 15 to 20 minutes. It includes large laser shielding acrylic panels to protect your eyes and skin from radiation while providing a wide open view of the machine inside, as well as an exhaust fan and hose to direct smoke outside and keep the machine and the air in your workspace clean. It also has two LED strips on the side panels and a camera built into the top panel, which can be set up in Lightburn software and used for accurate and precise positioning of your digital work over your physical workpiece, as well as for things like remote monitoring and creating time-lapse videos. After the enclosure was assembled, I installed the engraver and fed the cables and air assist line through the grommet in the back of the enclosure and connected the power supply, air pump, and the touchscreen display. In the settings you can choose which engraving mode you want to use and toggle different functions on and off, like the tilt and flame detection and autofocus. The engraving section is where you can access G-code files from a USB to work offline, and the touchscreen provides all of the controls needed for it. After the machine powered up with no problems, I set it up in Lightburn software so I could control it directly with my PC through a USB cable. To do so, I opened Lightburn and clicked the Devices button on the right side of the page. Then I clicked Create Manually and selected GRBL for the controller. Then I named the machine, set the parameters, and it was ready to work. I then clicked the Home button to make sure the stepper motors move and the machine homes without any problems before setting up the enclosure camera. To set up the camera, I first opened camera control and then selected USB camera from the drop down list. In order to use it for accurate positioning, the lens needs to be calibrated and aligned. I then placed the dotted card that IKEA provides for calibrating onto the work table, which I first covered with a piece of white paper to help make the dotted card easier for the software to recognize. Then I right clicked on the camera control window and selected camera lens calibration to open the calibration wizard. The wizard gives instructions to capture images of the dotted card placed in different locations in the work area, and after the image is captured it gives a score on how well the software could see the card in the image. A score below 1 is acceptable, but below 0.5 is ideal. If the score is greater than 1, then the card needs to be adjusted until the score is lower before moving on to the next step. After completing the lens calibration, I started the alignment. In this wizard, engraving parameters need to be set so that the laser can mark targets in each corner. 
After referring to the parameter table on IKEA's website for marking paper, I set the speed to 10,000 millimeters per minute and power to 25%, and made sure the scale was above 150 before clicking the frame button to frame the work area. Then I used the multi-level focus block to set the focal distance of the laser and click start to start marking the paper. The next step requires using the controls to jog the laser module out of the camera's view to capture an image of the targets, then using the mouse pointer to select the very center of each target in sequence. Once that's done, the alignment is finished and the camera can be relied on for accurate work positioning so you don't have to mess around with framing and making multiple adjustments to your workpiece to get it positioned properly. You can simply place your workpiece anywhere you want in the work area and then adjust your digital work in the software in a fraction of the time. But before I show you how to do that, I wanted to perform some cutting and engraving grid tests using Lightburn's material test tool, which we won't need the camera for at the moment. But I did need a cutting platform, and thankfully IKEA sent one of theirs. Test grids are a great way to test engraving and cutting effects on different materials with varying power, speed, and interval settings, so you can dial in your settings for a particular job without all the guesswork. The first test that I did was cutting through a piece of 3mm birch plywood. My experience using 40 watt diode lasers told me that this machine should be able to cut through this material at nearly twice the speed at full 70 watts of power. So I set the speed range from 500 to 2000 millimeters per minute and the power from 10 to 100%. Then I pushed the autofocus button on the controller to set the focus this time instead of using the focus block. As I expected, the laser cut clean through at nearly 2000 millimeters per minute, so that's a good sign that it's outputting the power that it should be. But to really put that to the test, I tried cutting a 19 millimeter thick white pine board. This is where the camera will come in handy. I clicked the update overlay button in camera control to display the camera view onto the work canvas. Once that's done, I can draw or drag elements anywhere I need them on the workpiece for cutting or engraving. In this case, I drew a U-shaped line to cut out of the side of the pine board. Then set the speed to 100 millimeters per minute and the power to 100%. The laser cut through a little too easily with these settings and almost started a fire. So I tried two more times using 200 millimeters per minute and 300 millimeters per minute with the power set at 80%. IKEA claims it can cut through 30mm thick pine, but this is the thickest that I have in the workshop at the moment, and it should suffice to give us a good idea of how much farther the machine can be pushed. 200mm per minute and 80% power seems to be ideal for this piece. The edges are straight and clean with no charring or surface burn. 300mm per minute was a bit too fast for the crosscut. Judging from this, I think it's obvious this machine could cut thicker material in one pass. But the more you push the limit, the more you're going to compromise quality and the higher the risk of a fire becomes. But that's still pretty impressive, and the auto sync function can be used to make multiple passes for cutting even thicker material safely. With the cutting test out of the way, I switched the laser output from 70 watts to 35 watts and created an engraving test grid for 3mm birch plywood. IKEA claimed the machine can engrave well at up to 54,000 millimeters per minute, and they weren't kidding. This is one of the fastest machines that I've tested so far. But speed is only part of the equation, so I set up a high resolution image to engrave on another piece of birch plywood. The settings that I used were 10,500 millimeters per minute, 70% power, 400 dots per inch, and Jarvis image mode.
This took around 35 minutes to finish and it turned out great. Satisfied with how well it works wood, I moved on to creating a test grid for black acrylic before switching the laser back to 70 watts and test cutting a piece that's 10 millimeters thick. Again, the laser cut through without any problems and with plenty of power to spare for thicker materials. But this was the thickest piece that I had, so I moved on to making a simple coaster using settings from the test grid, which were 30,000 millimeters per minute at 40% power. Finally, I had to see how well this laser etched stainless steel, so I created a test grid for that too. Diode lasers won't work any other type of metal, but they make up for it on stainless by producing hundreds of colors and shades that you can choose from to create really interesting work. I kept it simple and chose some colors from this grid to etch my channel logo in color into another piece of stainless. The steel that I used was a bit too thin for the settings that I chose, and it warped from the heat, but the marking itself still turned out great. So that's it for this video, folks. I had a good experience testing this machine. I didn't have any problems, and it performed as I expected. My only complaint is that there's no way to turn the exhaust fan off for the enclosure without shutting down the entire machine. It would be ideal for the exhaust fan to have its own switch, or if it was controlled automatically and only turned on when the laser is working. But it's not a big deal. I can always add a switch to it myself later. Let me know what you think of this machine in the comments, and check out the link in the video description if you are interested in getting one for yourself. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by clicking the like button, and be sure to subscribe so you won't miss the next one. Until then, thanks for watching, and take care.